Hello and thank you for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn webinar on Cloud Delivered Network Security. The call is a listen-only call. That's for call clarity. It's if somebody needs to put the call on hold uh, or just to cut down on ambient noise, less interactive than we'd like because we can't hear you. But if you have questions, please email info at ecar.com and we'll try to include Q&A at the end of the call or we'll follow up with you afterwards. If you need any help with the slides, our phone number is 978-692-4200. And just in case there's somebody who can see the slides um, but doesn't have the audio, the call-in information is shown below. So the mission of all of our training is to help you get more from the technology you already have and also to introduce you to new technologies that you need to know about. So security is in headline news all the time. And this is a presentation I saw with our partner, OpenDNS, earlier in the summer. And this is something that we think is really important, a product that we think is very important to include in our baseline security package. And, and this is the reason behind it. If you look at the headlines, you'll see there's basically something new going on all the time. Uh, Home Depot's been breached, Target's been breached, uh, the local supermarkets around here have been breached. There's something in the headlines just about all the time. And part of what's going on in the industry is the way, the way we do business is changing. Technology always changes, doesn't stand still. So we have cloud apps now. In your business, you have mobile users. There's Wi-Fi, BYOD stands for bring your own device. There's a lot of changes in technology. Here's some statistics. 70% uh, of employees use mobile devices for work. 63% of employees access the corporate data outside of the network perimeter. And this is really important. This gets into uh, when we were calling you in advance of this training, uh, you may have very good protection within the four walls of your office, but you gotta keep in mind that your laptops are leaving your network all the time. One in five employees use cloud apps to share corporate data. Kind of a little aside on this, if you don't have a company file sync and share set in place with proper security and access levels, then your employees are probably going off on their own. When we do security scans, <clears throat> we'll often see a lot of Dropbox activity that the business owners don't even know about. So you gotta keep this in mind that your data is leaving your network. 20% of employees use cloud apps without IT's permission. So there's this concept of the shadow IT. It's what you think you have in your network versus what's actually really going on in your network. So these are factors that you need to keep in mind in basically changing times so you can adjust your security to deal with all this. So the other thing that's going on is changes in technology uh, in terms of SaaS, software as a service. So uh, we're subscribing to applications now, salesforce.com, uh, multiple applications like that online. People are renting servers for storage. And the alarming thing, and uh, you know, working with OpenDNS has really opened my eyes to this, is how sophisticated the tools are now for the cyber criminals. So all the advantages that we have in business are also available to basically the bad actors who are trying to do you harm. So in the old world of cybercrime, the hacker organization was a centralized, they had to build everything from scratch. They had to build their, they set up their own servers, it was expensive, they had to go after the big targets because it was very hard to commit cybercrime. Now, with all the, the SaaS and cloud apps and all that stuff going on, the crime ecosystem has completely changed. It's distributed, people can buy and sell, there's marketplaces, for buying credit cards so when Target gets breached, all those credit cards are harvested, they're bought and sold. And people, are, people can pick and choose ex which banks uh, they, they want to go after. So that's really changed the game. So cybercrime is easier than ever. We get asked questions all the time about, well, gee, you know, I did what you asked. I said I have antivirus, I have anti-malware. It's, it's, it's not enough, security is not something that you set it up once and you just sort of forget about, it. okay, well, I did that. It needs to be constantly evaluated. Now, uh, small and medium businesses 
are in the crosshair. So if you look at, these are some statistics uh, from Symantec, from Verizon, that uh, threats against small businesses are increasing. And there's a lot of factors at play here. One is that cybercrime is easier to commit, so it's, it's lowering the barriers of entry. Uh, a lot of times people think, well, gee, you know, who would go after me? I'm just a small business on Main Street, you know, any town, USA. Well, they don't have to specifically go after you. They run scanning applications or harvesting information. So even if you might feel like, well, I'm under the radar, you're not, because the tools available will enable the cyber criminals to find you. It's real important to be aware of that. And the other thing is that attackers can target the weakest links in the supply chain. So if you look at what happened at Target, it was actually one of their suppliers that was used as a point of entry to get into the network. Um, I've read that at uh, TJ, the TJ Maxx breach years ago was an unsecured wireless access point. So there's always a weakest link, and sometimes it might be the small business supplier. So don't believe that you're under the radar. And this is uh, a letter. This was one of the suppliers, the mechanical services suppliers for Target. And this is devastating to a business. Uh, here, here you are. You've got this great account with a worldwide recognized brand, and then you find out you're the cause of the breach. Horrible situation. And the impact of a breach is high. There's all kinds of statistics on this. This is from National Cybersecurity Alliance, small business associations have these and it's kind of tough to put an exact number on this but the the real message is that it's a devastating to have a real breach like that is really a devastating event and it's estimated that 60 percent of small business firms could go out of business within six months and, th and this would be you know for a catastrophic breach so what's going on behind the scenes so the first stage of the attack is to just infect a system so uh, you know, if you're doing a car best practices, you've got, uh, and hopefully everybody on the call is on a support plan where you've got antivirus, you've got anti-malware, we're managing the security patch updates for you, uh, but still stuff can get in. And one of the ways is with these emails, these spoofed emails. So you get an email, looks like it's from FedEx, okay? It's five years ago, ten years ago, these kinds of emails were so poorly written and the graphics were so terrible, you would know instantly they were fakes. Now they're very sophisticated. So FedEx, oh, you've got a package, we had a problem delivering it, can you click on this link to arrange a redelivery? Or U.S. Postal Service, there was one going around from Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, the theme and variations, uh, we had a client uh, who opened one of these, it was a fake message from Verizon Wireless with a really big wireless phone bill. And this guy, this business owner has teenagers, he saw the email, got really mad, what did my kids do now, opened it up and boom, got a virus on the on the system. So there's a lot of ways for this stuff to sneak in. Uh, the malvertising is on the rise. So what this is, you may be at a legitimate website, boston.com, yahoo, any New York Times, and the ads that are on that, so New York Times runs their servers, but they also have advertisers, and these ads actually come from different servers. Those servers could be infected. So you're on a legitimate site, but something is entering your screen basically from another server. So that's something to be aware of. Um, the malvertising, targeting SMB. So here's an ad. Uh, it, it's a fake. It, it looks like it's from Bing. It's, oh, great deal. Get $100 in free ads. Start now. Uh, that's something that if you're, you're working and maybe you're thinking about an online advertising strategy, it's like, oh, great. I'll, I'll try that. It's Bing. It's Microsoft. It's a recognized brand. So stuff is sneaking in all the time. These are fakes. They're very, they're easy to spoof. It's illegal, but people can still do it. So there's been an explosion of these basically kits that are available that um, are just out there. The kits cost as little as $200. So when I, when I listened to the OpenDNS presentation back um, earlier in the summer, this is one of the things that really um, got me is how advanced and sophisticated these tools are that people can just buy and sell. They don't have to be uh, hackers who have worked in their basements for years figuring out how to code uh, it's, you can just buy this stuff and and basically commit crimes. This is what some of the dashboards look like. And if you look at this, 
this is where um, exploit kits, this is what one of the dashboards would look like. It looks like one of the dashboards you might run in your own business. Um, we run a ticketing system in our business where we look at all kinds of trends and things that are going on and uh, you can see the sophistication level here. So the intermediate step is the dropper malware. So what happens is you might get something on your system, you might not even know it. So this is stealth mode, stuff gets on there, it's not doing anything, and then the malware just sits there quietly and it does what's, what's called phoning home. So you may not even notice anything as strange about your system. It's, it's not the kind of virus where, you know, tip, you know, old warning sign was, oh, your system's going to slow down. Uh, this might just be sitting in the background. It's just sending out a message, sending out some information about your system. And people, the bad actors, can harvest this information using the tools that they can just buy on the web. Um, this is some of the information that's brought back. Um, they can see, for example, um, so let's say a particular hacker is going, I want to go after certain, uh, I've got an exploit that works well with AVG or Symantec or whatever it is. So I want to go after, or the fake, a, the fake antivirus ads. They can pick and choose based on IP addresses for geography. Uh, they can buy this stuff in bulk. Here's an email. To, it, it's written in Russian, uh, but it's translated here. Uh, this is somebody selling an overstock. I've got some exploit kits. I've got an overstock. Uh, it's really easy to run, and you can just buy it. So this is the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. This is what you're up against. So the malware payload, uh, this is one of the tools that can grab, um, let's say somebody wants to get credit card numbers and they want to make sure um, they get the, they, they want to get that three digit, four digit code, etc. Again, they, it's just they click on things. They didn't have to study programming for years and years and years. They can just uh, buy and sell this online. Uh, in the rare cases where somebody does get caught, and a lot of these folks operate from overseas, so they're out of U.S. jurisdiction, uh, but occasionally they get caught, and, and sort of the, uh, the impact of this is really understood at that point. This is one of the hackers that was caught. They were selling these invitation-only, uh, selling these kits on invitation-only black forums for around $1,000 to $8,000 a pop. They had at least 150 clients. Um, one of the clients had stolen, just one of them had stolen a reported $3.2 million. So this is folks who can harvest bank account information, et cetera. And, and this is some of the examples. These are, uh, there's, there's places online where you can look at, because there's reporting about this. Uh, but they have the capability of going after, you know, large amounts but not super huge amounts of money from a lot of people. So in your small business you might think, well gee, I never have that much money around, but you know, on the day before payroll when your, your payroll account is, is ready for a transfer, they can just go in and get it. And, and that's what happens. And, and because it's automated, it doesn't really matter that you're not the big fish, you're not the Fortune 500 company. It doesn't matter because with the efficiency of the tools the criminals have, they just go after hundreds of you and, and can get it. Uh, the other big trend that's out there is ransomware. We've talked about that in previous training sessions. Uh, crypto locker, crypto wall, it's been around for a couple of years. Basically, is you see this giant uh, red warning sign with a with a clock that's ticking down. Um, this is basically an act of vandalism. They don't actually have the data on your system, but what they've done is executed code that scrambles it. It encrypts it, and if you want it back, then you need to pay. They say pay up. Um, now, now here's the risky part. You're paying criminals. Uh, in this particular case, and it's a whole other subject we've covered in another training, is this is where you will absolutely need to have a rock solid backup to rely on. And uh, there, are, there were two police departments in Massachusetts that actually wound up paying the ransom, which, you know, ironic, the police are paying the criminals. A horrible situation because they didn't have a solid backup. So that's something that when all else fails, there's no such thing as 100% security. Uh, you will have to rely on that backup in some cases. 
So just looking at the whole flow, and you really need to understand this whole flow to see what exactly you need in your security policy to protect against. But uh, in the case of um, these crypto style viruses, first something's just infecting your system, the email. Um, the fake email from Dun & Bradstreet, Verizon, all these different things, they get on your system. It, it's sitting there, it's doing nothing. You may not even know it's there. And then it phones home to get an encryption key. And then it will encrypt. And, and one of the things around here is that uh, it, it will take a long time for this to happen. It will go through. Um, it can actually go through and get network shares. Uh, and, and, and just one aside, this is why it's extremely important. Uh, the, the whole reason we do these monthly training sessions, in fact, is that you need to make sure that all the employees in your organization understand how threats can come in. And even when you've done everything right, and we're always evaluating and increasing our baseline security for our clients, but even when you've done everything, this human factor is so important. So for example, one of these missed shipments, so manager gets the email, says, oh, I don't have time to deal with this, I'm gonna send this to my assistant. Now the assistant's receiving a message from an authority, the assistant's boss, saying, take care of this package, and they click on the link. You got to be on the lookout for this all the time. So signature-based security evasion. So this is kind of a technical term, signature. Signature-based tools like antivirus, anti-malware, what they do is they look at stuff on your system and compare it to known bad stuff. So those are the signatures. And what estimated reports say, maybe that hits half of the stuff that's out there. And so the idea and kind of, of, of using a tool, using OpenDNS is saying, well, you need to supplement that with something else because the, um, these tools can be evaded. So basically, when everybody gets antivirus in place, then the bad guys try to think, okay, well, how do we get around that? Uh, so there's tools called cryptors that can be used to hide executable code in, in stuff that's not going to be detected by antivirus. So there's tools out there that are, they're, they're kind of in this gray zone where their markets are, well, we no, we're actually selling to software developers and we want to make sure legitimate code doesn't get stopped by antivirus because that's a problem that um, sometimes when we set up antivirus reports, you have to whitelist certain applications that look like, oh, the antivirus says, oh, this is trying to attack the system. It's like, no, 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 this, this is a known good program. So then, these folks marketing the software say, well, yeah, we need to, um, so we need to have these tools so that software developers can figure out how to, you know, run legitimate code. But in reality, they're used for a lot of bad purposes. So you can um, basically pick and choose uh, where, where, how you basically bypass uh, different kinds of antivirus. And then the tools will advertise that, uh, you know, we protect against, like, basically every name brand is out here of antivirus. So, uh, again, it doesn't take a sophisticated computer genius to do this. You just go buy a tool to get a cryptor to hide your code so it can get in through an email. And these tools are just available online. So you see the dollar amounts are pretty small, very low barrier to entry, and that's what you're up against. So strengthening security beyond signatures. Uh, you need to look at the full infection chain. So because basically the bad actors know you have antivirus, you have other anti-malware signature-based tools. If you're following CARU best practices, you're going to be running a sonic wall firewall with the comprehensive gateway security. That's all protection in place, but it's looking at signatures primarily. And what OpenDNS does is look at traffic beyond that and say, well, what's emerging right now? Because there's this, some of the viruses are actually designed, they're called polymorphic, they will change over time. So uh, your signature um, we get asked, well, why do I need antivirus if I do OpenDNS? Well, your signature-based antivirus will protect you against every piece of malware that's already known. So, for example, every, every virus that's out there, it's still, it's still circulating. Everything that's ever been written, it's still circulating somewhere out there in, in the, eco, the computer ecosystem. So that's still protecting you. And what you're complementing that is saying, well, what's emerging right now? 
Okay, so that's where the predictive cloud-based security comes in. So what that's looking at is, um, what OpenDNS does is it looks at all the internet traffic in the world, 70 billion requests daily. It's looking at, are there any trends? Like, So all of a sudden, a bunch of computers start uh, trying to contact some server in Russia. It's like, wait a second, why is all this traffic going there? So it's analyzing that traffic, and it's a lot like what the credit card companies do for fraud prevention. So you have a pattern of buying habits that your credit card company, you know, this is big data analysis. Uh, they know what your patterns are of buying. And then all of a sudden, if you live in Massachusetts and suddenly somebody's buying, you know, there's a furniture purchase in Atlanta, that's going to get flagged saying, well, wait a second, this person doesn't live there, they don't buy stuff there, or trying to buy gas in California. The credit card companies use predictive modeling to understand how what the normal behavior is and then can flag stuff that's abnormal. That's a lot. That's uh, really what OpenDNS does. It's like, wait, there's unusual traffic here. And, and it's trying to catch that stuff that it, it, cryptos were used to bypass your AV. It's on your system. It's kind of a brand new threat. So it's evading. It's not in the signatures yet. And when it tries to phone home, when it's silently trying to do that's when it's going to get caught. And that's where you have to look at that entire kind of food chain of security. So it's looking at just millions of data points per second and then using sophisticated techniques to just analyze that. Again, very much like fraud prevention in the credit card company. And then identifying, wait a second, this does not look right, and then it's going to block it. When we talk about security, uh, really what you need to think about is a multi-layered approach. So this is one thing to think about, normal glass versus bulletproof glass. Well, bulletproof glass is, consists of layers of regular and polycarbonate layers, or different layers put together. And work each layer isn't strong enough to stop a bullet, but it's the combination of the layers that does. Exact same thing with security. Uh, your firewall is not going to go away. Um, you should be running on a car best practices, a business class firewall on your network. Uh, we advise everyone to go with the comprehensive gateway security. That's staying in place. Uh, your antivirus, your anti-malware, we're monitoring that. Um, and, and if you're not on even our, our baseline plan, uh, you should definitely be on that, keeping your security patches up to date, etc. cetera. Um, but each one of those layers work to, together. And now we're including OpenDNS with that as well for this predictive protection. And this is talks a little bit more about um, the different layers of protection. So with email security, we're using reflection. Uh, that's monitoring your mail in the cloud before it gets to you. Now, a big piece of that is cutting out the spam, which unfortunately is about 90% of all email volume in the world. But there's also viruses that come through. So that's, that's one way we can catch the bad stuff. The endpoint antivirus, endpoint means that's on your, on your laptop, your PC, et cetera. That's stopping antivirus. It's looking at what's going on in your system. The firewall, um, the Karu best practice, the sonic wall business class router. Some folks out there have the Cisco machines. There's other great brands out there. But the thing here is a business class router, not the thing you bought at Staples on sale eight years ago. Uh, OpenDNS is the new layer uh, we're putting in right now. That's the predictive modeling. And one of the really important things is the firewall, sophisticated as it is, and with the comprehensive gateway security suite, it's really analyzing the traffic that comes in and out against identified threats. What OpenDNS does is when you take your laptop out of your the four walls of your office, which is highly protected, and then you go out into the you, you bring it home or you bring it to... You know, another office, conference room, hotel, Starbucks, OpenDNS is still running and protecting you in that case. And then the other layer here, training and policy. That's why we do monthly security trainings. Call us anytime. If you have a question that pops up, we, we want you to ask questions and understand. We get a lot of calls from folks saying, hey, I got something on my screen. Is this normal? In some cases, it's a standard update, and we'll tell you it's normal. Um, we can remote in and look at the screen. In some cases, we say shut off your system and, and, and disconnect it from the network. Uh, it, it, people should know when to ask questions, what looks, uh, what looks suspicious. Uh, the other thing around here is if you look at HIPAA security guidelines, 
uh, mass data security law, both and other security guidelines specifically require ongoing employee training. It's not just a nice to have, it's required by the security compliance rules. All right, so um, again, this off network coverage. And, and, and then the other piece is the appliances are expensive and complex. So if, if you have a very small office and we come at come to you and say, you know what, you should have the SonicWall TZ300 with Total Secure that might be beyond your budget. Uh, we really ask people to prioritize security. Uh, sometimes people have maybe a small office with just two people and or they have multiple offices. So in that case, the open DNS layer is even more critically important. If you don't have that solid business class firewall, it's, it's even more important. So again, it's all complementary. They work together. It's different layers. Um, but you need to definitely, if you have a weakness in one area, that makes the other layer that much more important. And, and this is just the trend. So the OpenDNS is it's 100% cloud-based, so we're not installing any equipment on site. It's all done. Um, the installation's done uh, remotely. Uh, we've rolled it out to uh, many clients. We've been running it for a couple of months now on our own just to make sure we don't see any um, you know, unusual behavior. One of the things, just to remind everyone, whenever you put security in place, there's the chance of what's called the false positives, that you're going to be blocked from getting to some place that, well, wait a second, I know this is a known good site. Uh, th there's content blocking in here, too. And kind of phase one, we're putting in all the security settings. But just so people know you have this option, because we get asked this a lot of times. People say, you know what, uh, I've, got, I've got a problem with people just staying, you know, they're on Facebook too much. Uh, you can actually block traffic to specific sites. We often recommend that that's handled through a management policy, but in some cases uh, you can pick and choose by computer uh, which kind of sites that sites you want to block. So please talk to us. That's that's beyond, that's a content filtering that you have the capability of, um, and that's uh, in addition to the security. Like, you're going to be blocked from going to if there's a known hacker server in Russia that you will be definitely be protected for that automatically. It's the other folk, it's the other traffic that you could selectively uh, prevent if if you need to do that in your business. Just so you know, that's an option. And this is just a little bit of a technical diagram showing how things work. These are your systems. They go out to the Open DNS server, so it's basically managing all that traffic and comparing it against because there's so much data. It's 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 really a, a um, a phenomenal big data application. This is just looking more at uh, you want to prevent the malware, blocking the phishing attempts, etc. You may want to block the content. That's something to think about as a management uh, objective in your business. Okay, and then this is just an example. So for example, when the CEO takes their laptop to Starbucks, they're outside of the four walls. That as amazing as your firewall may be in your office, this this laptop is now outside of that protection, and now you've got this open DNS layer protecting. So that's just kind of what this shows. It doesn't matter where you take your laptop. We put an agent software on each system to protect you. So to summarize, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, we're at the end of our time. I know people need to get back to work. So key takeaways, I know I covered a lot of ground, a lot of facts and numbers and maybe some technical terms. The real gist of this is that I, I want everyone to understand that technology changes all the time. There's no standing still, there's no going back. So your security policy needs to be constantly evaluated to say, okay, well, what's new? What do I need to protect against? I hope you've seen that the landscape has changed. It's, it's not the lone hacker or organization full of computer geniuses who have spent years figuring out how to attack you. It's, it's criminals who can buy tools, inexpensive, easy to use tools that are just going out and blasting and, and harvesting a lot of information. So you're not under the radar as a small business. So think about multiple layers. So when we identify uh, something that's uh, really important for our clients, we're going to include that in our security bundles. We've done that with OpenDNS. A another really important thing to know is that there's no such thing as 100% security. The idea is that you want to put as many layers of protection in as possible. Again, your, your backup, 100% uh, 
you, you need a rock solid backup. You need to think about, we have budgetary conversations with folks saying, well, you know what, you, you got to put this backup. You, you want it in the cloud. You want to protect against a building catastrophe, a site catastrophe, et cetera. And people sometimes have to make trade-offs for budgets, but you got to identify what is your mission critical business data that needs to be protected. Because regardless of how many amazing layers of security you have, there's still a chance it's, it's not 100%. So that's something extremely important for people to know. All right, and with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, please go to our website, ikaro.com. Uh, there's links there uh, to our, our Twitter feed. We have tech headlines there that we've curated them and figured out, okay, these are the ones that are important uh, for small business that relate to you. We have a monthly newsletter. Please join us for monthly security training. Please ask your employees to join in and listen because you do need to have security training as part of mass data security law, uh, for medical offices, HIPAA requirements, etc. cetera. Uh, but with that, I'm going to conclude, and thank you very much for joining us.